Yeah, it's been incredibly emotional. I've been, I've been surprised by two things. I didn't think Putin really would do something so extreme as what he's done because he's he's just put, put it up to everybody to react. But the, the reaction has been incredibly emotional from ordinary people and from politicians, including in bureaucratic organizations like the European Union and so on. So really, it's been, yeah, it's been quite a week. Uh, perhaps not so much. I think we've seen in the pandemic that people can come together. They can also take the opposite approach sometimes. But uh, it is, um, you know, European country being being invaded uh, for no valid reason whatsoever. So uh, you would expect a, a strong, strong reaction from that. Obviously, from your international perspective, what's been, has there been a big surprise from you by the way some of the international community have responded? Yeah, the response has been incredibly strong uh, at all levels uh, from like directly arming Ukraine. And we should remember, obviously, that this is this is a big deal, as in the, um, the UK and other countries are sending high quality material uh, to Ukraine that, that's fighting Russia, that will be killing uh, Russian soldiers and airmen and, and so on. And it being very direct and open uh, about that, uh, the financial and economic sanctions are the, I think, the most extreme and most wide ranging I've seen. This is real. The phrase economic warfare is sometimes uh, hyperbole, but it, but it's valid here, actually, when you think of the freezing the assets of the central bank, reducing access to SWIFT, uh, things like air, airspace bans and all kinds of other kind of cultural boycotts as well. So it's really a full on, it's, it's the strongest response, non-military response one could have imagined. What do you think is going to be next? And I appreciate that's a difficult question. But, you know, do we have more sanctions up our sleeve? Do, what do you think the international community will be looking to do next? That is the big question. The question is the, the dynamic. What happens next? Obviously, already a lot of action has been taken. Uh, what you want to avoid, of course, is where people feel that the military situation continues to escalate in Ukraine. And the West feels that there's nothing left they can do apart from, you know, join in militarily, which would be a, which would be a disaster, clearly. Um, when there are peace talks ongoing, uh, it might be possible that Russia has offered some kind of off ramp whereby they could keep the territories they took in 2014, but withdraw from the new ones, uh, the, the ones they've recently occupied. And Ukraine might consider status of neutrality if they believed it would be genuine independent neutrality and they wouldn't be just a vassal state of, of Russia. That might be worth considering. Obviously, joining NATO was the dream for Ukraine, as it has been for other Eastern European states, as the ultimate guarantee of security. Uh, but if there's another way of achieving that, uh, that's credible, that could be worth uh, worth looking at. But the situation we're in now is one of constant escalation. Russia has just announced countermeasures on um, uh, international uh, investors in Russia, whether it seems like they're ex expropriating their money or at least not allowing them to leave uh, temporarily. So and there's a there's a fear that Russia, which isn't doing well um, militarily or hasn't been, will will escalate by using more, uh, shall we say, um, indiscriminatory forms of violence and their heavy weapons against cities and so on. And then uh, there's a fear that things could could spill out of control. Uh, but there are two tracks. There is a kind of negotiation going on and people have to keep keep the lines open because Russia is a country with over 5000 nuclear weapons. So that has to be remembered. A lot of people are obviously watching on in horror about what's happening and a lot of younger children even in some cases you know looking on their social media they're seeing images from from this conflict what do you have any kind of advice for explaining it to, to young people is that something that's kind of within your sphere in some ways some people on social media obviously get into looking at it almost like it's it's a football game or a movie or something which is obviously completely inappropriate um i tend to try to explain wars as like a, like a natural disaster, a bad thing that happened uh, to children, even though it it isn't really it's 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 more human frailty. Uh, try and try and explain this broader the broader structures and yeah, I think I think that's it really. But there's no way to sugarcoat it too much. The world isn't is an unpleasant place, and war and violence uh, does happen. So they have to be be aware of that. 
I suppose, try to get them to think constructively about how, um, in this case, we're trying to help the people of Ukraine and hopefully find a, a reasonable peace uh, as well. And even in Durban, we've seen some, you know, quite big demos. Do you feel people are making their voices heard? Do you feel kind of the more solidarity events we see kind of, you know, that that galvanizes world leaders in some ways? You know, is it having an impact, do you think? Do world leaders, are they aware of what's happening on the ground in their own countries when people are calling for different things about a situation? I think so. I think they've been swayed by the emotions in several ways that the figure of Zelensky and the Ukrainian people have been so so heroic and that I think that has sent a wave of emotion through leaders as well as ordinary people. Uh, I think they're aware that there is support amongst ordinary people for uh, sacrifices, economic sacrifices in this case, because let's be clear, these actions against Russia and that these dramatic financial actions will have an impact. We don't know how much yet, but on on Western economies as well. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, it does have a, an impact in that sense. Whether the Russian leadership cares, of course, is, is the big question. I mean, we've seen uh, over time that countries don't like being isolated, as is happening to Russia. South Africa uh, back you know, a few decades ago became a prior state and was cut out of sport and eventually economic sanctions. And that did have an impact. Uh, the problem is that that took quite a few years for it to happen. And we don't have years in this case. The big question in Russia of course, is whether the, the, the unpopularity of the war in Russia, and there's no doubt that it's unpopular in Russia. Russia's do not see themselves as, as fighting Ukraine. That it's it's just um, they see themselves as, as very close, and there's lots of uh, relatives across the border and so on. So it's, it, that's not going to be popular. Does that have any impact on the Russian political system? Is is the big question that we're going to see, and does the even the impact on very wealthy and powerful people have an impact on on Putin and his regime. That's what we'll have to see also.